have that little problem. Hostile intent, imbalance of power, repetition, distress, and provocation. Bullying can have a wide spectrum of effects on a student, including anger, depression, stress, and suicide. Additionally, the bully can develop different social disorders or have a higher chance of engaging in criminal activity. If there is suspicion that a child is being bullied or is a bully, there are warning signs in their behavior. There are many programs and organizations worldwide which provide bullying prevention services or information on how children can cope if they have been bullied. This is one of those programs. I don't know where this show came from, but I remember the show's title. Stop Bullying Now. No joke, that's the show's title. I only saw it on YouTube, and I can remember the show's characters. They were anthropomorphic animals, like a dog named KB, a pink cat named Cassandra, and much more. I don't remember the rest of the characters, so this was new to me. I remembered an episode, or was it a webisode, about KB's first day of school, till she bumps into Cassandra on the way to her classroom. I don't remember what number it was. And another episode where KB befriends one of Cassandra's friends, a rabbit. But one of the three episodes were more, far more different than the rest. I don't remember what episode they were, or what the episode's production number is. But one thing for certain, it scared the ever-loving shit out of me. I remember constantly covering my eyes and praying it would be over soon, but I couldn't stop watching it anyway. I felt drawn to it, like a moth to a flame, despite me feeling increasingly frightened more and more as the episodes continued. It started out with one episode, where KB was at soccer practice with her new friend, till Cassandra ruins her shot by blocking the goal. She brags about her winning the soccer tournament till a new kid steps in. I remembered him vividly. His name was Steve, and he was a cat like Cassandra, except his fur was a light blue color and wore a gray hoodie and some black denim jeans. And I also forgot to mention that he was shy and antisocial. He would periodically cover his face with his hood and usually talk in a quiet voice like Edward in those Twilight movies. One of the many challenges he had to face growing up was a major disorder that deemed him many insulting nicknames in the short time he attended grade school, before he was moved to homeschooling, Tourette Syndrome, which caused him to tick and twitch in ways he couldn't control. The kids would tease him and mock him with exaggerated twitching and laughing. It got so bad he turned to homeschooling, it was too hard for him to be in a common learning environment with seemingly every kid poking or more like stabbing fun at him. Cassandra took his opportunity to make fun of Steve with exaggerated twitching while the other girls laughed. KB and her friend watched as this happened till the gym teacher sent Cassandra to the principal's office. KB tried to make friends with Steve but he was too shy to even say a simple greeting. As we cut to the second episode, Steve was seen outside the school as KB watched him from the classroom window. KB was interrupted by the school bell, then the teacher noticed KB feeling sorry for Steve. KB asked why Steve never came to school. He then told her about Steve's past, and KB finally asked that question, can I meet his parents? And what the teacher said shocked every viewer watching the series. When Steve was 12, he and his parents were involved in a tragic car accident that resulted in their death. Steve's symptoms worsened greatly because of this. He lost his appetite for food, became even less social than before, and slowly began to lose his sanity. Then the third episode began. Steve was picked on by Cassandra once again and this time KB actually stood up for Steve, almost resulting in a fight. The teacher broke it up, and Steve thanked KB for standing up for him. When school was over, 
Cassandra threatened to tell her dad on KB, and called out Steve for letting KB attack her. Steve began to protest against her, until KB let Cassandra off with a warning to either back off or she would tell an adult, mostly in this episode, a police officer. Cassandra ignored KB and went to hit her, but Steve blocked it, causing Cassandra to accidentally punch Steve in the jaw. Both Cassandra and KB were shocked at this, but the pink cat shook off the cobwebs and attempted to go for KB, but Steve blocked her again by grabbing onto her wrists and throwing her into the ground, like a teenager wrestling a child. He told her that he was not scared of her anymore, and they would deal with this tomorrow. Cassandra gave up and goes home, leaving KB to thank him for saving her life. The fourth episode began quite differently, and it did raise a few eyebrows. It starts off with Cassandra getting dressed in the middle of the night, and sneaking off into the school. She called her friends over, but they were too busy sleeping, so she went by herself. She then attempted to open the windows and slip through, but the wind made it slam by itself, trapping Cassandra halfway. She then tried to push herself free, but she knew she was already stuck. She pulled harder and harder and harder, till she tired out. She then reached over at the lock, opened the window, and fell to the ground. She then stuffed KB's locker with a jar of green substance, which turned out to be sulfuric acid. She then smiled to herself and left. Episode 4 ended, and Episode 5 was no better. KB opened her locker, and was severely burned. Images cut to quick sessions, as the school was filled with the sounds of KB's screams. Steve rushed into the school to find out what happened, but was stopped by police. He quickly blamed the bullies for KB's injury. He swore vengeance against anyone who tried to hurt her, and angrily stormed back home. Episode 6 was the last one before it got deleted. It cut to Cassandra and her friends chatting on their phones. Cassandra. OMG, did you see her face? XD. Daisy. Yeah, it was like, ah, my face, look at all the burns. Cassandra, LMAO. Gretchen, hey, what are you up to this weekend? Cassandra, well, I might need to think of something, because with teacher's pet finally out of the way, I'm looking forward to classified information. Daisy, Cassandra? Cassandra, are you there? Gretchen, Cassandra, come on, answer. Daisy, Cassandra? The text messages went on and on, but no sign of Cassandra anywhere on their phones. Police arrived at Cassandra's house later on in the night. The neighbors heard a girl's shrill screams from Cassandra's family home, and her parents were out on an anniversary dinner. They hadn't gotten the news till later on, when Cassandra's body was discovered in her room, stabbed to death. A long kitchen knife was present in the crime scene and the episode finally ended. The episodes were deleted for graphic content in adult situations, making it hard to watch for children under age. The only evidence is that the show wasn't aired on television, but online, where it couldn't be seen by kids, so that these graphic episodes wouldn't be seen. But one thing is for certain though, all of the scenes I described earlier are based on true events. And that was The Devil's Due, written by Psychopasta. Review time. This was a special story, in a good way. I loved every second of this, mainly because of how real it felt. See, bullies will do just about anything to get their way, uh, depending on how they act. For example, um, they could be bullying someone because they want an excuse to make themselves feel better, and they believe that this is the way to do it. They could be desperate from attention from other people, and the people they actually do get attention from is people 
wanting the same attention they're getting. It could be because they were treated poorly by other kids in other schools or in their neighborhood or their parents or something like that. And, um, yeah, stuff like this gets projected onto other kids uh, more often than people think. And it can go to pretty drastic measures, like in this story, definitely. Now, um, I'm going to give an example of something that happened to me a long time ago, elementary school. I'm not, like, still upset about this, but it's the best example I can give. When I was in elementary, I kids made up a game about me where if they touched me or if I, like, touched them on the shoulder or something... I, they would get the touch. They would get infected. And they have to touch someone else to get to um, transfer it or something. And the moment I told a teacher about what they were doing and they got caught, they started crying and apologizing to me. See, the only reason they're sad is because they got caught. They know that when they get home, they're not going to be able to play on their consoles, their video games, on their phones, stuff like that. That's the only reason they're crying. They're not actually sorry. And <clears throat> this is definitely not comparable to the events that went down in the story here. But I'm saying anything could happen. Uh, when a bully is trying to get his or her way. Here, it's it gets to a point where this Cassandra girl literally puts sulfuric acid meant to burn the skin, flay it, into this KB girl's locker. Uh, and when she opens it, her face peels. All of this because she was beaten up by another kid that really had and KB had nothing to do with it she was simply just doing it as some sort of uh, warning to show hey don't mess with me this is my uh, revenge plan and in return this uh, this dude uh, Steve gets pissed off rightfully so and he ends up following her home and killing her in her home. Uh, the lesson here is that a wrong doesn't make a right. Obviously, a wrong makes another wrong. And this story portrayed it very well. <sighs> and also... Some people may not believe this, but I think it's understandable as to how she would get sulfuric acid in the first place. Like, there's, like, chemistry classes, science classes in this, um, in this grade. It, it makes sense. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Wow, this story was... Very believable, very real. Also, not to mention, uh, this story actually made me want to check out the series it was talking about. Stop Bullying Now. I went on YouTube. It went under the name of StopBullying.gov webisodes. And yeah, these definitely feel like something that would be showcased in an elementary school assembly. But... The events listed here definitely feel like something that could be shown to teens or, uh, like, middle schoolers, per maybe, like, early high schoolers, somewhere around that demographic. Psychopasta, I'm going to be giving this story a 10. This was very good. One of your best stories yet. 
in my honest opinion. Good job, man. You did it again. Like, I can't wait to read more of your stuff in the future. And, um, yeah, that's it. But, as always, this is simply my personal opinion. We all have our opinions regarding these pastas. What did you think of the pasta? What would you have done to improve upon it? And, as always, I will see you all in the next narration. I love you all. Bless. Thank you.